another bright spot, by the way, in, in the ETF business as of late has been these leveraged and these inverse and single stock ETFs or any combination of those words. A phenomenon, by the way, that's clearly taken the ETF business by storm. We've seen the Tesla Bear ETF, which is ticker TSLS, see big inflows since launching back in August. Now, we should mention that ETF resets, by the way, that one specifically on a daily basis and gives you the daily inverse performance of Tesla shares on that particular day. Now, tomorrow, Granite Shares is gearing up to launch three new leveraged single stock ETFs on the NASDAQ, allowing investors to place even more amplified or leveraged bets on popular names, including Meta Platforms, NVIDIA, and Alibaba as well. We have the guy, we have it straight from the horse's mouth, Will, tell us more about this new suite of ETFs why now and why have such single stock products gained so much momentum and traction in 2022 and will it continue in 2023? Yeah, thanks. Good question. I think it's really a simple answer and that more people are managing more of their own money. And to go back to the, the original point that you mentioned about you know, the ETF inflows, you know, one point that doesn't get discussed a lot is advisor fees and the fees that people pay for money management more broadly. Now, people care less about that in a market where they're making money. The market is always going up and you know, the amount you're paying your advisor or an investing service is less of an issue. But people really care about that when you're losing money and be able to start to fixate more on the fees and the performance of managers. And all that leads into this trend that we're seeing you know, over and over again, which is people are taking more control of the money, of their own resources and managing that. And in part, you know, what that means is more focus on levered single stocks or individual securities, as well as obviously other sectors of the market uh, that people are interested in. But it ultimately comes down to people taking more control of their own uh, finances. Will, uh, if I could follow up just very briefly here, and I know it's a complicated question. Is there a worry in your mind that there has become, a, a, in essence, a gambling mentality or a gaming mentality between, between some of these names? And that's the reason why some of these folks have gravitated towards inverse and leveraged products that can enhance returns. If they can't get enough of just meta on the beta alone basis, they can lever it up and get one way or the other's exposure. Is there a worry that that kind of leads to, to perhaps irresponsibility down the line with regard to managing risk? Well, I think that, you know, leverage ETFs, and they all work the same way, have been around for over a decade. So people have you know, a lot of experience with these products and in terms of how they work. That doesn't mean that there's not more room for education. There's not more room to, to, to have these kind of strategies out there and explain, you know, more detail how they work. But I think the leverage involved in these single stocks is actually less than what you see with other parts of the leverage market, particularly even the leveraged ETF market. So we're typically talking about 1.5 times uh, the daily performance of an underlying company like Alibaba or Meta. So, of course, there are going to be some people that this is not appropriate for. These are really designed for active traders, you know, people who are experienced in the market, who probably have active trader accounts and are very familiar with these underlying companies. And definitely that they're, they're not, you know, long term buy and hold, you know, one size fits all type solutions. But for the right investor, for the right trader, you know, they provide that exposure that people are looking for in some of these cases, which is you know, short term amplification against big names or indeed if you're inverse you know inverse exposure which for the majority of investors is still incredibly difficult to get it's an excellent point will understanding some of the risks associated with these these instruments uh tom in hearing what we just heard from will how exactly would you or us as a society basically measure the success of these leveraged and single stock etfs many are expecting the markets to be stuck in this kind of fat and flat type trading range next year. Does that factor into investors' need for finding more alpha outperformance rather than just market exposure or that beta? Well, Tommy, as Will said, it just gives more options. Uh, these types of ETFs have been around, as Will said, for a long period of time. We have to give individuals credit. Uh, they're not, if, if they're going to shoot themselves in the foot, it's not going to be with an ETF. It's going to be with a meme stock or cryptocurrency or NFTs or, or something like that. 
We uh, have a lot of sophisticated investors and advisors that are using them. The volume has increased dramatically over the years, especially with this downturn in the marketplace. But it's meant for traders. It's meant for more sophisticated investors. And you have to look at it every day. With these new single stock ETFs, the great advantage is if you want to put more money in it or if you want to be short, you can do so in this ETF structure without having to fill out a margin application or an options application with your brokerage platform. So kind of a, a neat opportunity for investors out there, but they know they have to be careful. These things have been around for a long period of time. There's been a heck of a lot of education that's been out there led by SEC guidance and the ETF issuers that offer them up. So more importantly, as we look at the ETF space continue to evolve, there are more and more choices, which makes a lot of sense as the structure has kind of held the test of time as we're coming on 30 years of ETFs as we look back on to uh, SPY, the first ETF that we had in the, in the U.S. in 1993. It's, it's been a great run. A, a huge run for sure here. Will, Granite Shares has already had several single stock ETFs in Europe for a few years now. Why has the reception overseas been perhaps warmer to these types of products from a regulatory perspective than here? And, and maybe that goes to my question to both you and Tom with regard to the risk tolerance and profile for these products. I, th I think it was more a case that um, what most people don't know, Dom, is that in the U.S., uh, there are only actually two companies allowed to launch lever products. So when we started Granite Shares, we weren't allowed to launch any levered products. It wasn't possible. And that's really been the state of play in the market for a long time. It's a market structure uh, issue. And that really changed over the last couple of years with the introduction of the ETF rule, um, which allowed companies like us or any company for that matter to launch leveraged products for the same time. So the U.S. has definitely had um, some issues with regards to you know, updating regulation around uh, leveraged funds and you know, providing that access to uh, issuers who want that. That wasn't the case in Europe. Um, it's just a slightly different case here uh, involving market access. But you know, I think in Europe, the, the reception of these products has been good. Um, and you know, there, there's more of a culture, perhaps you could say, in using derivative-based products. And so that's something that investors uh, perhaps are more used to. But that being said, you know, the U.S. is obviously a huge market for leveraged ETFs. It's the biggest market in the world for leveraged ETFs. And I think we're starting to see you know, some of that reflected in the, in the volumes here with um, these particular single stock funds, even though it's still very early days. The majority of these products launched only in August, so it, it's, it's early days. The, the trend certainly has been to the upside with regard to the trading activity and volumes for some of these single stock names for sure.